Good morning. I'm out here at Sweet Marsh getting ready to go for another paddle. Um, it's kind of interesting because at any time now I was expecting that I wasn't going to be able to paddle out here since they're draining this to do some substantial renovations, putting in uh, some channels and, and deepening existing channels. But there's still enough water. As you can see, there's still enough water to paddle in, so I'm going to go out and see what I can find. Um, if you look behind me, you can see that there's quite a few people out here fishing, they're bringing their big boats out, they're catching, and uh, at least the fellas I talk to are going to help move fish down to the other end uh, and try to save some of, the, some of the population that's out here. So um, let's go out and see what I can find here. I'll for sure be putting some still photos in with this, either it embedded in the video or at the end, but let's go see what I can find. It's a uh, Nice, pleasant morning so far, a little bit of a breeze, but not bad, and uh, a good day to be on the water. You might notice that I'm in my kayak today. My canoe is not was not available, so I thought, well, what the heck, I'll just grab a kayak and get out. It's kind of fun. I have a couple of solo canoes that really work well for getting in and out of and hauling all of this camera equipment. Quite often I take them, but today, like I said, I'm just grabbing the kayak. I wasn't sure when I first got out here, I wasn't sure if it was gonna rain or not, so I'm carrying a bare minimum of gear. I got dry bags inside the kayak here in case it does decide to rain, but it looks like it's clearing. We shall see. Looks like the water's down probably close to, I don't know, 10 inches to a foot. So slowly but surely it's, it's draining out of here. Um, I did talk to some, or I did hear from some people that, I did hear from a fellow that said that they left the water up a little bit longer than I expected um, so that they could move some cattails, so the contractors could move some cattails around before they start doing their work. Most of these cattails are just floating anyway, and if they get on them with a big enough boat or big enough equipment, they can drag them out and move them around and um, be helpful if they just get rid of some of them because this place is getting overrun by cattails. If you listen, you can hear the many warblers, the other bird species that are calling out here. Quite often I see yellow warblers, common yellow throats, indigo buntings right in this general area. Red-winged blackbirds are nesting in the cattails. You might have heard that one. But there should also be some shorebirds. Now, I don't know. We're kind of late in the season for me to easily find them, but I might find Virginia rails. I might find soras. Um, I did hear sandhill cranes when I first got out here. But we shall see. Of course, there's going to be geese somewhere out here. And maybe trumpeter swans. Sweet Marsh hosts quite a variety of uh, bird species. As for reptiles and amphibians, we've also got, uh, we know that the Blinding's turtles live out here, and this used to be a location for Massasauga rattlesnakes. I know they're in the area, but I have not seen one out here at Sweet Marsh for probably a decade or more, not a couple of decades. It's been a long time. I have seen them along the Wapsipinican River watershed, but not out here at Sweet Marsh specifically. Oh yeah, Sweet Marsh has changed. It's very low. Um, as you can see, I'll turn this kayak a bit. No moving through here very easily. At least not if you've got a motor dragging behind. I may still be able to get around a lot with this kayak, but it's going down, that's for sure. But it wasn't very deep to begin with, and that's what all this work is going to fix, is this shallowness. At least in the, chan uh, the channels along the edge, and then they're going to put in a couple of other channels. Deeper channels, which will help the fish. 
I'm glad I came out here to see it this way. If they had drained it a bit earlier, when all of the shorebirds were migrating through, this would have been a feast for the for the shorebirds. I'm sure this fall it'll be busy with them on their migration back south. Looks are a bit deceiving at the boat ramp. I'm surprised how much it's changed out here. I'll get through all this or not. Looks like it. Looks like there's plenty of water. But then I only need a few inches. If I got that few inches of water, I can move this kayak through it. Once they get this water drained out, it's going to take a while before they're going to be able to move heavy equipment in. There's so much silt and muck and whatever you call it. It's gonna have to dry out. I would expect there's gonna be some equipment getting stuck every now and then out here. Unless they just wait months for it to dry out. Sure not seeing any water lilies blooming yet. be a little early. We've had anglers coming up from all over because uh, there's no limits out here right now. What doesn't get moved out of here, what doesn't get caught and relocated or caught and taken home and eaten for a meal will just go to waste dying out here. So there's been quite a few people out here that I don't know who they are coming from I don't know where catch some fish. I can hear from the distance the fellas that took their boats out earlier. They must be getting some hits. I don't know if they're catching them. Must be getting some hits because I hear them laughing and, and commenting every now and then. So the water that was drained out of here was moved into the lower unit, segment A. They've raised that up more than they normally do during the summer months and that's uh, that's to keep the fish alive that were relocated down in that segment. Let's hope it works because there were some really nice fish out here. You might be able to see that that 4x4 post sticking out of the cattails there. That uh, this, this clump of cattails has quite a few of those posts in there. I'm guessing they have something to do with marking where the channels are going to go. Not sure. Pure speculation on my part, but I don't know why else they would have them. I would guess this island's got some wildlife in it, but I'm not seeing it right now. There's another post. Those strong windy days move these cattails around, which then cause them post to lean or move. And um, I can't imagine that, does, that it doesn't throw some complications into figuring out how they're gonna do the work. Probably anxious to get this drained down to get these cattails locked into place, whether they're here or, or moved. Got a female red-winged blackbird, there's another post. There, I think you can see the post. There's a sandhill crane. Being harassed by the blackbirds. Not sure if you got to see it or not. I think it took flight. Maybe there's a young one out here. Since it left silently. And the young cranes can't fly yet. So I'll just sit out here for a little bit. 
Maybe we'll see it. Those are sandhill cranes calling. So I'm guessing those are the parent birds and there must be a young one in here somewhere. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't fly over here again. Young one's gotta be pretty good size by now. Unless it, they were a late nesting family. We'll just paddle slowly around this island, see if we can find that young one, if there is a young one. I'm guessing there is, but without seeing it, who knows. If I had better footwear on, I could get out and walk. But those young birds, they're so, they've been trained by the parents, they're smart enough, they know to just get down and I can walk right by them and not even see them. And now I'm stuck. Oh boy, I might be getting out in the muck anyway. I am beached. Just enough depth. Right there on the log, you can see that painted turtle. If we can, we'll paddle around this island. Um, if I'm lucky enough to see that young crane, I'm hoping it's on the other side, just because the lighting would be better. There's a little opening in here. I think I want to head that way, since that's where I saw the parent leave from, or the adult bird. I shouldn't say parent, maybe it's Maybe it was just feeding here. Oh, I should have brought waders out. This would be fun to explore. Let's just see what happens now if we sit here for a while. Get a little better view. I'm gonna get comfortable. I gotta tell you, it's too bad there's not smell-o-vision on these cameras because it smells like stinky muck. A lot of plant decay, I'm sure critter decay, and it stinks. That's where the wildlife is. I just noticed that over here to the side, there's what appears to be a couple of goose eggs. Wonder why they were abandoned. Well, if you can see them there or not, a little bit left of center. I'll shoot still pictures and put them in the video. Uh, 
I'm continuing to explore here in these cattails. Hoping for maybe a glimpse. We'll see. Nothing yet. It's got a whole lot of blackbirds really irritated with me. Oh, I see why. In a nest right here. You can see it right there. They weave they weave the vegetation around the cattails like that. Make a real nice deep cup. It's an interesting process. That might explain why they were so irritated when I came back in here. Uh -huh. There's a red-winged blackbird sitting in her nest. Let's see if she stays when I go back by her again. Try to get some still pictures first. There's a bullfrog. This is the side, the opposite side of where we were just in. I'll still go around it, just in case there's something interesting along the edges. I'm surprised I haven't seen a snake somewhere. Huh, nothing. Red winged blackbirds and a bullfrog. I'm sure there's more than that in there. We're, I'm just not seeing it. All right, well, let's go out and check some other areas. Uh-oh, there's that shallow spot again. We gotta look out for that. I did it. I went into the shallows again. I'm a slow learner today. There we go. The guys in the boat must be getting some fish because I hear them talking about the hog. Fishing's a lot more fun when you catch something. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I'm a pretty poor fisherman. But I gotta be honest, I don't try very often either. It's one of them things that I do what, what, what I'm interested in and what comes easy, which is more so photography than, than fishing. Although it is fun to catch fish when they're biting. So I might come out here this week, as long as there's still some water, I might bring my boat out and give it a try. And here I found some 
fragrant water lilies. I think I'll shoot some pictures. If you look down a ways, it looks like the DNR is trying to catch more fish. You get fence posts and probably a net. Yeah, I can see a net. Catch more fish and probably move them down to the south end. That's good. I hope they survive. We're approaching the area where a number of years ago I had what's probably the most interesting experience ever out here. It was on Father's Day weekend. In fact, it was on Father's Day and I can't remember the year. It's, it's been quite a number of years ago. When I was out here paddling, I was actually, I had been called the night before about a loon. So I had paddled out here looking for this loon. Couldn't find a loon whatsoever. No, no loon in sight. Um, but I was way out here on the corner to my left, way to my left. I was out here looking around trying to find trying to find a loon when I saw something moving in the water and it was black and it was an odd shape. I couldn't recognize what it was, but it was an odd shape. So I went over towards where it was <coughs> and pretty soon I noticed that it had one round bump on it. And I thought, well that's weird. What what am I looking at here? And then it turned and I could see a second bump and it was uh, lo and behold I, and I even said it out loud I said well that's a dang bear and it was a black bear swimming across Sweet Marsh here uh, so here I'll show you the uh, picture picture or two if I can find them uh, as I shoot this I'm not sure if I'll have one or two pictures for you I'll at least have one picture for you of the black bear the one of the wandering black bears of Northeast Iowa it swam across, <clears throat> that bear swam across into these cattails and I watched it and then I lost it in the cattails. It didn't make hardly a sound and uh, I couldn't find it so I did just what I'm doing now. I went around this side. I was obviously much closer, much, much closer because I didn't realize I was looking at a bear. I thought I was looking at a bird. Um, so I was much closer. When I couldn't find it, I went around these cattails, like I'm doing now, and you'll see here that these cattails open up to the left, and they make sort of a, a little channel passageway, and that black bear, I got to see it a second time as it came out of these cattails, and it swam across this shallow area here, and went into that timber straight ahead of the canoe, or ahead of the kayak. So that was the wandering black bear of Northeast Iowa experience that I had out here at Sweet Marsh. And that picture that I was telling you about here, here is uh, probably the best picture of that, that black bear. Needless to say, I was surprised. Uh, I could hardly believe my eyes that I had seen it, but uh, here's the photo proof. I've been really lucky that way as far as wildlife photography is concerned. I've seen so many things that it's just dumb luck that I see them. Um, but I've been really lucky that way. Day after day, or not day after, not every day, but quite often I'll see something. Seldom is it a black bear. I have seen two black bears in Iowa and I also, um, well here I'll show you the picture of the second one. This, this second one was wandering along the county line and we found this one in the woods um, the second black bear and and then um, about that time I can't remember if it was the same year or not I believe it was in, in that same two or three year period there was a wandering um, bull moose in Bremer County and I had gotten a heads up from a from a buddy of mine who I greatly appreciate the heads up anyway I went looking to see if I could uh, find that moose where he told me he had 
he thought he had seen it and I got my tripod set up and I waited about 45 seconds and out walked this bull moose. So here are a couple of two, three pictures of that bull moose too. So for the people who think that there isn't wildlife or much, there aren't many wildlife species in Iowa, think again, we get them, not often, but we do get them. It pays to always have a camera with you because you never know what you're going to see and it really pays to know how to run your camera so when those rare occasions happen you're able to document it quick it, it comes second nature to you to just hold it to your eye and you have all your settings ready to go and you just have to focus point focus and push the button Yep, this has gotten way low. Up there you can see a beaver lodge. Beaver hotel. I haven't been out here enough to, at, at dusk at anyway, when he's generally out moving around to even see it. But there's almost always a beaver or two working out here. Oh, and the water's moving around it. That's a big one. Getting all exposed as they drain the marsh. Gonna have a lot of work in vain. That is quite a creation. Need to check this out too because quite often snakes like to sit on them. Oh, there's a snake right there. They like to sit on these, around these beaver lodges and sun. Oh, there's two snakes. At least two that I can see right now. I'll have to tell the fishermen because one of those guys is really scared of snakes. I'll have to tell him where he can go to see some and get over his fear. I would guess he'll ignore it. Oh, there's one all stretched out. I'll tur turn this so you can see it. Got to do it slow. That's quite the balancing act. Got some size to that one. Now well, let's reposition so I can get a different shot. The other one's just coiled up. I see that often. Oh, there's one up above too, moving around. One of the things about wildlife photography is you learn where kind of where to look to find things. So if your goal is to shoot photos of snakes, then you you know where to look. And like I said, beaver lodges almost always have one. So here I'm seeing at least three on this one. Beaver lodges on a day like today anyway. These are northern water snakes. They're non-venomous. They're ornery. Generally, they have an attitude, but they are non-venomous. If we could get all the way around here, we'd, we'd look and see how many more we can find. So I don't think you would want to just start picking apart a beaver lodge during this time of year. Because you might be surprised by what you find. Unless you don't mind snakes.
I don't mind. Oh, there's another one. I don't mind snakes. Oh, there's two there. Wonder if we've got some mating going on. Let's see if I can get in a better position here. Oh, there's three snakes there. I would guess that there's a there's some mating going on there. If I could look at them from up above, I bet I'd find two tails twisted together with another male waiting. Got another one here, a small one. And that's just the snakes I can see. How many more are there here? Might be able to hear that bullfrog. These snakes will easily eat that bullfrog. Like I said, I wish I had different footwear on it. Get out. With snakes, at least with water snakes, generally the female is bigger and then the males, the males, you know, somehow they sense that she's there and ready and waiting and they can mate all day according to the research I've looked up. Oh, there's a big one. It's not, well, it's still connected to the beaver, beaver dam. That's a big one. Oh, it's moving. That's a big one. That one's several feet long. That's probably a female. Let's go see if we can find her. Gee, the big one. No, she took off. She didn't get that big by being, being dumb. She knows when to move. Yep, she's moving away. Well, this was worth coming out to. Now where'd that other one go? Here it is. There's a little one. Does it make somebody a nice pet if it was legal? Size-wise anyway, except that they got a rotten attitude. Getting too close, I can't focus. Okay, I've lost track. How many are out here? Five or six in one spot. That's impressive, but not a surprise because it's a beaver lodge. Plenty of cover for them to hide in. Plenty of area for them to lay out on the sun. Well, it's shallow, so I don't know if I can get any closer, but I'll try. This is one of those things that had I brought a boat out here, I would have missed all this. Did I see that one before? I don't know if I even saw that one.
So in Iowa, when you're looking at snakes, if they have a round pupil, they are non-venomous. If the, if the pupil is vertical, I think of it like a fang. If the pupil is vertical, you have a venomous snake. So you've got two things that you have to do. You have to remember it and you have to be close enough to see it. And oh my goodness, how did I miss that big baby? It's way up on the top of the mound, top of the lodge, and it is looking at us. And look at the size of that one. That's a big one. That is a big water snake. That's the kind of stuff that gives people nightmares. Even though it's not going to hurt you if you don't bother it. But look at the size of her. I would guess that's a female. Wow. Some of the snakes in Iowa, when they're feeling threatened, they'll, they'll shake their tail so it sounds like they're rattling, but they're not. I mean, yeah, the tail's rattling, but they're not rattlesnakes. But these snakes, they don't even feel threatened. They know they're far enough away that I can't get at them. Wow. So now how many are we at? I don't know that that bird should be close. Because they'll easily, they'll readily eat young birds. They'll eat anything they can catch. So we only saw a couple sides of this beaver lodge and how many snakes did we see? So that tells you how pop, oh, there's another one. One after another after another, this is great. That one's got a forward and backwards laid out pattern. That too is a big snake. Well, it's too shallow for me to get back there any further. So unfortunately, I'm going to just let the snakes go and see what else I can find. I bet I didn't find all of them. That was worth the trouble. All right, I think we'll go around this island and start working our way back. It's been a good outing. So I'm going to paddle my way back. Apparently our five to eight mile an hour winds are a little bit more, which is making this a little bit more effort than I anticipated, but it's okay. That happens. Well, I talked to the fellas who are fishing and I even offered to trade places that I would fish on the front of the boat for a while if the guy that's not real comfortable with snakes would like to take my kayak up there and see it because I don't think their boat's going to let them get in there. It's just too shallow to take that big of a boat. But for reasons 
unclear to me, he declined my offer. Apparently he doesn't want to get quite that close. Or he doesn't want to give up fishing. Probably the latter. Oh well, I tried. And they know where to go if they want to see him. Okay, up here on this log to the left, yeah, I don't even know if you're seeing it with that camera. But there's a painted turtle on that log. I'm gonna paddle past it and then let the waves, the wind and the waves carry me up to it for photos. This usually works quite well because it's not so much the kayak that scares them, it's the paddle until you get right up on them. He's not so relaxed yet. He didn't stay put long. So I paddled all the way around to that east boundary, the east edge of Martin's Lake. I'm going to take this in. Gets me out of the wind and sometimes I see things along here too. Although nothing so far this morning. been a good outing though especially as far as the reptiles are concerned hitting the jackpot on all the snakes I'd really like to find a blandings turtle yet though some days you do some days you don't well this was a fun and productive outing even though I didn't see as many birds as I often see out here um, and that's primarily because of the nesting season. The adults have the young, if they haven't hatched out, they're working on it. And if they have hatched out, the adults have the young under protective cover, so it's unlikely I'm going to see them. Uh, but I did see plenty of reptiles and amphibians, and um, that made it worth it. In fact, I might be seeing a... Uh, nope, I think it's a painted turtle right now. Like I said, I've been looking for a Blandings turtle, but I don't see it. Blandings. This turtle's dead, nearly standing vertical. Don't see that very often. This has been a really, really fun, really productive outing here at Sweet Marsh. Martin's Lake at Sweet Marsh. Um, as I said earlier, they're draining the water so it's ever changing and the days of being able to come out here are about numbered for, for this summer. But I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to bring a boat out here and actually do some fishing and photography. But um, if I'm just focusing strictly on photography, then I bring this uh, kayak or canoe out here. I have fish from my kayak as well. It's just that with the way things are right now, it'd be fun to run the boat out here one more time before it gets drained. Now, I'll certainly be one of the early paddlers out here once it fills back up after the work is done. You can hear a sandhill crane flying over. Here, two of them. Oh, there are four of them. Only two of them were calling. What neat birds. If you've stuck with me at this video, especially after the snakes, because I know I probably lost a few viewers with the snakes, but if you've stuck with me this long, um, you got to see another another view of Sweet Marsh. You get to see why it's why it's unique in the area, um, why it attracts so many uh, different species of wildlife. I really like it out here. I always find something to do. 
But again, if you've stuck with me this long, I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.